We have a great topic for today. I'm really looking forward to it. Might as well go right on in. (laughs) I hear discussions almost on a daily basis, either misrepresenting Christianity or arguments trying to disprove what Christianity really is. Most of what I hear comes from social media, mainly YouTube. I do watch a lot of YouTube. (laughs) I'm guilty. But But what I notice is, it's causing confusion among believers and unbelievers. But that's the enemy's entire plan, right? So as believers, we must stay woke. And that's some of the reason why I do watch YouTube to kind of see what's going on. And I typically look at Christian YouTubers and things like that. And they report on some of the things that's going on in the world that I typically don't keep up with outside of YouTube. But yeah, we must stay woke by being conscientious of the message that we're sending to others, all while professing that we are a child of God. People are always watching you, how you live, what you say, if what you say adds up to how you're living. Now, on the other hand, I also hear discussions where believers are standing on the truth of the gospel, regardless of the backlash and the persecution. And what is the gospel? In a nutshell, it is John 3, 16. Very familiar passage. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe on him will not perish, but have everlasting life. I thank God for those that are using their platform to stand on the truth without compromise. I pray that God opened up the eyes of the others that are confused or are in error so they can also use their platform to spread the truth of the gospel. The passage that inspired the journey tip this week is 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 15. I cannot wait to share what God has laid on my heart to share with you today. But right now, we're going to get back to some more inspirational music for the journey. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of God, the sinning angel, pray the fam never comes distant strangers. Imagine exactly what we could be saving. These curse cycles lead to assassination. Learn the only way to keep peace is treat your vibe sacred. Assume we've all been witness to harsh for realities. But men and women lose themselves once emotions get out of reach. My pops taught me, son, practice what you preach. Don't be surprised by those in the crowd. You share that same speech. Look alive, still recognize. You see the same peaks. Who talk like mothers to take crumbs and make meals that last weeks, huh? I've seen details of how the fabric made. The sweetest poem Angelou never made. Still I share This shine, little shine. light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light this little of mine, light. I'm gonna let it, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it shine. I never felt worthless, I always understood I had a purpose. Judge a man by his soul, y'all only looking at the surface. A bunch of clowns in the circus and the grass full of serpents. So one false move, you could be riding them hearse. Man, the future got me nervous, cause the words that we speak literally can start to stop generational curses. And the enemy's always lurking, I'm like a Bible with these verses. Watch me spit it with no curses, have them playing this in church. Ain't no practice in rehearsing for this thing called life. I lost my mom and my wife, still I try to be alright. But through the pain and the strife, God always shows me no matter what. He can turn my pain in the light. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it shine. Yeah. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it, let it.
Well, today we're going to talk about, again, 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, where Peter is encouraging and teaching believers of how to respond in a hostile environment. He says, But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Most people want to be liked by others. Most people want to know that they fit in somewhere. Most people seek validation from their peers and their loved ones. Most people like to be recognized every now and then. That's normal. That's our human nature. Now, some will never admit this to you. And they keep a strong front. But in their alone time, they struggle internally if they do not feel that their efforts are making an impact in some way, shape, or form. They struggle when what they have done to try to help or encourage someone has either the reverse effect or from what they can see, no effect at all. Yet, some of these same people refuse to allow the discouragement that they feel at times to stop them from living out their God-designed purpose. Not to say that they don't have thoughts of throwing in the towel, just like Jeremiah in the Bible did. However, just like Jeremiah, they keep going because they have what my uncle Odell liked to call it, the I can't help it. (laughs) Or like Jeremiah puts it, it's like a fire shut up in their bones. They have to walk the path that God has called them to walk on their life's journey. They have to do what thus says the Lord. But on the other hand, some people crumble under the pressure of it all because they measure their success and effectiveness by what they can see. If they feel as if their efforts are not having any impact or they're not getting the results they expected, Some people will either give up or begin to compromise so they can get the reaction that they are looking for. And before you know it, they find themselves way off track, all for the validation of people. When the only validation that we should be concerned about is validation from God. So what does validation from God looks like? I read where someone put it this way. Validation comes when we understand who we are. Knowing yourself and knowing God is intricately connected together. You can't truly know who you are or God's validation of you if you do not have a relationship with him. We usually get caught up trying to get validation for what we do rather than who we are. And I'll add this. As a child of God, our identity is found in Christ. And when we truly know who we are in Christ, then the threats and insults of others carry little to no weight because we see the bigger picture. Peter says, even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. So how are we blessed through our suffering? That's a question I've asked myself several times during the course of my life. Well, Jesus has an answer. It's found in Matthew 5, 11 through 12. Jesus said, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven. You see, we are blessed through the favor of God over our life. With the favor of God, we see the impossible happen. Not only that, we have the ability to demonstrate the fruits of the Spirit which are all characteristics that we cannot obtain with the flesh. Through our suffering, God's glory is revealed. We are blessed by a closer relationship with God and stronger faith, which is difficult to obtain without experiencing some type of suffering. We are blessed with the promise and gift of eternal life. We are blessed by the treasures that we are storing up in heaven which will last forever. Amen. The word says to be unbothered by them that persecute you for righteousness sake. Now we all have a them in our lives. (laughs) 
Do you know what you should do about them? Jesus said in Matthew 5, 44, he says, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. That's what you need to do about them. Don't try to seek revenge or anything like that. You should pray for them. Pray for them. If you are walking your God-designed path in life, despite the suffering or persecution, none of it is in vain. Finding the strength within me, power and heart and glory, seeing the light ahead, choosing peace instead of making an enemy. Yes, 1 Peter 3.15 says, But in your heart, honor Christ the Lord as holy. Another version says to sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. What does sanctify mean? It means set apart. Set God apart in your heart from everything and honor him for what and who he is, which is holy and sovereign in all his ways. Period. Peter goes on to say, always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give a reason for the hope that you have, but do it with gentleness and respect. Now, you should be able to tell someone why you got saved. What fuels your desire for Christ? Romans 5 verse 8 does it for me. Paul said, but God demonstrated his own love for us in this. While we were yet still sinners. Christ died for us. Yep, that does it for me. Now, we all have our personal story of the reason for our hope. But for the most part, it all ends the same way. Just one question for you. After you sincerely ask God to come into your heart, to come into your life, will you ever the same again? My answer is no. And I, I, I feel confident in saying yours is no as well, because God does that. He changes us in a way that we can't change ourselves. You see, the change within us is tangible. People that knew us back in the day and they meet us now, they can see that change in us, even in our appearance. It's different. It's the proof of 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17, where it says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. Mm. If you haven't experienced the supernatural change that comes with giving your life to the Lord wholeheartedly, what are you waiting for? <laughs> there is nothing in this world. Listen, now, th there's nothing absolutely nothing in this world that's worth the risk of being separated from Father God forever. Nothing. And I, I say this quite often because it's true. Without God, I'm no good. I'm not. Just me, myself, and I is no good. <laughs> I need the Lord in the midst. There is nothing that I could do on my own to earn a position in heaven with Father God. So that is why 
I talk the way I talk and I act the way I act. He's done too much for me to keep my mouth shut regardless of the naysayers. Mm -hmm. But still, I had to challenge myself when I read that verse. I had to challenge myself with the question, am I ready to give an answer for the hope that I have? I know why my hope is in Christ, but could I explain it to someone else? When given the opportunity, I want to be able to explain the hope that I have in Christ so someone else can experience it too. You know, I stand firm on the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for my sins before I was ever born. He did it for you, too. He rose on the third day and he still lives. The Holy Spirit lives within me. He speaks to me and he changed my life and he is still changing me. God's word is a light to my path because he has proven himself faithful through his word. And one day I will meet him face to face. That is the reason for the hope that I have in Christ. Amen. It's personal, y'all. It's personal. (laughs) And that's why I'm about that life. Yes, I'm about that life for Christ. Yes, You have to be ready to give an answer to explain the reason for the hope that you have in Christ, but with gentleness and respect. I mean, how can you talk about the love of God with a nasty attitude? That's not right. And it sure doesn't point anyone towards Christ. If anything, it'll do the opposite. You can't be angry talking about the love of God. No. Colossians 4 verse 6 says, let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Are you ready to give an answer for the hope that you have in Christ?
listen. If God be for us, who can it be against us? For we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that who are called according to this purpose. Hallelujah. Put on the whole arm of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. I tell you, he's out. And having done all to stand, stand. You won't let nothing separate you. Don't let nothing Today we discussed 1 Peter chapter 3 verses 14 through 15, where Peter said, but even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy. Always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet, do it with gentleness and respect. From that, I got this journey tip for you. Avoid compromising your faith in your relationship with God for the things and validation of this world. Be ready to provide a reason for the hope that you have in Christ by using love and gentleness. Listen, your validation is found in Christ. Your identity is found in Christ. So stay devoted to him, the one who called you out of the darkness and into the marvelous light, something that you or I am unable to do on our own. Now, if you haven't given your life to him, understand this. What the world has to offer you isn't worth the risk of forever separation from God. To say that you won't be affected when someone does something wrong against you or when you're suffering is not realistic. That's why the Lord warns us not to be troubled or don't fear when those things happen. You can take your concerns to the Lord, allow him to fight your battles and continue to move forward unbothered because you know what the word says. It says you are blessed if you suffer for righteousness sake. God will give you a peace that surpasses understanding, allowing you to walk around unbothered because you know the truth. You see the bigger picture. What the world has to offer does not compare to the riches and the rewards and the treasures that's awaiting us in our heavenly home. It's just not worth it. Mark 8, 36 through 38 says, For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? For what can a man give in exchange for his soul? For whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him will the Son of Man also be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Who wants to miss that? I know I don't. Again, it's not worth it. As a child of God, you will experience persecution. You will experience suffering. But the Lord said, if you experience suffering for doing the right thing, you are blessed. Believe it. You are blessed. And God will see you through it all. Be ready to always defend your faith. Stand up for the truth, no matter what. All right, all right, it's time to go. I want to say happy anniversary, happy birthday to all that have celebrated this month, this past week. I love you with the love of Jesus. Know that I mean it. I'm Davida Janine, and I want to thank you for listening to The Journey Tip. Be blessed and continue to allow God's word to be a light to your path.